Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. Well, hello and welcome to Bowtie Life. I am Bowtie David and we talk mostly about life in the garden. And I guess today is a little bit about life in the garden as we're about to can with the Presto Precise Digital Presto, digital pressure canner, uh, about three pounds or 1.3 kilos of green beans grown in the garden. Now, uh, I do like this machine. Uh, we actually have put out a number of videos about this, and we've had a lot of great questions and comments that uh, I've just really enjoyed reading and answering and interacting with people so feel free to comment on this video if you have any questions or any comments on, on, on your experience but uh, the, uh, the the Presto Precise digital Presto pressure canner I'll be able to spit that out before the video is over I'm sure uh, anyway this is a relatively small batch uh, canner it's not the all-american where you can put in 45 quarts or whatever it is and I know it's not that many, but it's a lot. Um, but, and it also does a lot of stuff automatically. And uh, we are a suburban homestead, not a homestead, probably just a farm garden. Uh, I have a 100 by 100 foot property and we grow stuff here in smaller quantities than a big farm. And so when we harvest stuff, it comes out to about three to five pounds worth of stuff. In fact, we have, I'm sitting here looking at some cucumbers. I just harvested about three pounds of cucumbers. We'll be doing pickles in another video pretty soon. But uh, anyway, so it's a really, for me, it is a really good small batch uh, processor. Now, that being said, I know Becky over at Acre Homestead, she actually uses this a lot 
uh, in her home and she has a huge garden and she cans a lot of stuff. And she has times when she will use the digital pressure canner and she has times when she'll use her regular pressure canner because it's bigger, uh, but depending on, you know, small batches. And I think we're probably looking at a few pints of beans here, but uh, yeah, we're gonna try and see what we can get out of this. Uh, Mrs. Bowtie may have to consult with me and tell me if she wants pints or quart jars out of this first harvest. We are just starting to get our beans in and it is October. So it's been, uh, the summer has been a little bit uh, challenging for growing things. But um, I did look up in my uh, ball home preserving and there's no sponsorship on this. There's no sponsorship on the book. There's no, we don't do any sponsorships right now. Uh, but um, these are things that we're using and we're finding are very helpful for our little homes, our little homestead, our little garden, whatever you want to call it. Um, but the, this is a compendium on canning, and this is officially what is recommended for canning things uh, on this in this book. I believe it's on page one fourteen. Uh, it talks about no, that's not right. Uh, two fourteen. Uh, it talks about. Uh, canning beans and how to can beans and nope I'm in the wrong book sorry um, talks about breaking your beans up into one uh, two inch pieces you saw in the intro video I actually have a little bit of obsessive compulsive and I have my ruler here to make sure I was in the range but uh, uh, it also says that um, a quart takes one and a half to two and a half uh, pounds of beans. We've got three pounds of beans. So I'm hoping to get uh, three, maybe four pints out of this batch. We're going to have more coming soon. Now, if you look back on some of my earlier videos about this machine, there is a uh, place in there where I recorded a video and we did a lot of canning. Well, last year we can we grew a lot of beans that were not stringless. And we tried to pick the strings out, but it just didn't do very well, and we decided to, to abandon that. And it was a mess anyway, because we had blanched them and froze them, and then we decided to can them. And well, you know, it's just, it's just, it was just all confusing. This year, we grew stringless beans. In fact, next year, I already have my seeds on the way for the Taiwan foot uh, yard long beans. A friend of mine over at Gardens Happen told me about it and the seeds are actually on their way for next year. So we'll be growing these and those next year to see what we can do. But um, anyway, so we're gonna go through this process uh, in detail, and uh, there's gonna be a thing at the end where I actually take the pressure canner apart. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about parts and, and cleaning and so forth, and uh, I'm gonna talk through a little bit about that at the end of the video where we'll after we're done pressure canning, we'll clean this thing and I'll, I'll walk you through all the parts. Uh, it is not a very complicated thing. It, is, it, it may sound daunting, but it really isn't as hard. We, we, this is our first entry into pressure canning and uh, it's been pretty good. Uh, we hadn't had any mishaps yet. So uh, we've, got, we've done pickles, we've done jams, we've done uh, preserves, we've done some more stuff down there, and I can't think of what it is right now. But uh, like I said, 100 foot by 100 foot, we've converted almost all the property into gardens outside of the house. And even inside the house, we're growing lettuce over here. But um, anyway, so I hope this is a helpful video. Please, uh, if, you've, if you've not already subscribed, uh, I do intend to make more videos about using this in the future. And uh, so please subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing and uh, appreciate everybody watching and uh, watching it through to the end. If you feel so compelled, it all helps to grow the channel. So anyway, I think we're ready to get on with the process here. Uh, let's get some jars sanitized.
So the very first thing that you need to do is be sure to sanitize your jars. And there are several ways to do that. Some people will put it in a dishwasher in on the very hot setting and run them through the dishwasher. These have actually already run through the dishwasher, but uh, they have not been sanitized recently. So another way to do it is to use uh, some boiled water and pour over it and sanitize it. And the reason why you want to sanitize it, or you can, you, or you can just boil them in water. But uh, the reason why you want to sanitize your jars is because you want to start with everything clean. And that's very important. So first question though is why would we can stuff? And the simple answer is to preserve things to last longer. Uh, our beans are going to be coming in here in the next month, uh, the month of October, most likely. I'm not sure if we'll be how far into November we'll be harvesting, but we're not going to only eat 50 pounds of beans for the month of October. So we preserve those in an effort to spread that out. Now, properly can, pressure can, like we're going to do here today, you can store these for a year. Uh, some say 18 months, um, but uh, you can you can actually store your food longer, your produce from your garden longer, which is what we're trying to get to. And this is, we're coming up on two years in this and we're still learning ourselves. And so uh, we're just inviting you along on the journey to learn with us. So anyway, um, I will be covering things in a rather simple way here at the beginning because uh, we've had a lot of questions from people who are literally just buying their first canner and this is their first canner and so I want to make sure I cover a lot of things so uh, if you want to fast forward a few seconds uh, on if you're on your phone you can tap the right side of your screen to fast forward a little bit uh, and if uh, you're on a computer you can use the arrows to fast forward a little bit at a time as well so feel free to get to whatever point you need to in this video if you're looking for something uh, also in the description below there's a detailed index and you can click the timestamps to go to certain parts of the video. Feel free to do that. Feel free to watch through if you want to. It's, 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 your, uh, it's your device. Do what you want to do with it. But uh, anyway, so this is the Presto Precise Digital Pressure Canner. Uh, it will hold, I believe it's uh, five quarts or um, eight half pint. Okay. I just did a little short on this and I've already forgotten. Yes, uh, 10, uh, five quarts, eight pints, 10 half pints. And the half pints have to, will be stacked. But uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, five quarts is not, I mean, I know there are machines that will do a lot more than that. And again, we don't do that much harvesting on our little 100 by 100 property. So uh, this really fits our needs perfectly. So, um, First off, the way that it opens, there's a, le a lock right here, and this arm comes up, and there's a locked and an, a remove setting, and there's a little U right here. You turn that, and the lid comes off. The lid is pretty cool. There's a lot to it. There's a pressure gauge in here. I'm sorry, there is a, a pressure relief in here, release in here. There is a pressure gauge in here, and I've actually had a couple of people say they had a hard time getting this off. The first time you you pull it off, it is very hard to pull off. Don't fret, uh, it's just how it works. It, it, after you do it once or twice, it does pop right off and that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, so um, the next thing is uh, you have a liner in here and the liner actually has a rack and the rack actually is packed in the top of the box but this actually goes inside. Uh, you'll see there's little uh, feet on here those feet go down inside here so that you have the flat, flat side at the top of the rack. That keeps things from burning on the bottom, okay? So that's very important. Um, okay, so uh, the other thing is, without this liner in here, never get this wet, okay? You never want moisture inside this container here. There's actually... Um, this is where the heating happens. There's, you can see there's a little button down here in the bottom that knows when this thing is in. It'll actually not do certain things uh, when this is not in there. The only place that you're gonna be having water is inside here, which is really convenient because um, 
you can take this out and there's actually a line and it's kind of hard to see, but there's a line here for how full to fill it. Uh, it's a little raised line right there and you fill it to that line and we're going to warm our jars in here. It actually has a setting, a really cool setting for warming jars and I'm gonna show you that. So I'm gonna go fill this up uh, from the tap with water up to that point and then we'll see how to fill the jars. So this is filled with just tap water. I'm going to set this in carefully, not to spill. And it's only got about that much water and that's what you need for uh, pressure canning. And the next thing I'm going to do is we're gonna put these jars in here. And I do have a jar lifter. Uh, if you're new to a jar lifter, the part with the rounded thing here, this actually is what lifts the jar. The little handles up here, sometimes they kind of turn. That's where you grab it by. So uh, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna fill these jars about half full so that they don't float in there. And we're gonna just warm these jars. So now this is not hot water any longer. This is just uh, tap water. Um, these jars are classified as sanitized. Uh, we're just gonna call it that. Uh, and then now I did get five jars. I don't think I'm going to need five jars but I did get five jars simply for the reason that uh, you always want to be prepared for uh, needing extra space. And actually I have a sixth jar in here in case something happens. So don't ask me what, whatever. Just, it's the Boy Scout in me. Anyway, okay, so I got those jars in there and we're going to put on the lid. And again, you put it, install, remove in the little U, turn it, fl uh, flip down the lever, and you might have to adjust this a little bit and spin it like that. Now, the display. Let me get you a close up on the display. Now, first things first, when you're plugging in, you want to plug in directly to the wall. You do not want to be using an extension cord for this. This thing uses a lot of power. It can heat up and melt an extension cord or a surge suppressor. So this has to be plugged in directly into the wall. Uh, so when you t first plug it in, you'll see it says pressure can and it has a knob here. And if I turn it, you see it goes to boiling water can. That means um, uh, <laughs> water bath canning, okay? But we want pressure can. And then what you do is you just hit simply tap the button. Now, this is actually asking how long the canning process needs to be. And I've already looked up in the book and the canning process for pints is 20 minutes. In fact, you can see here in my book, I actually underlined 20 minutes here for the green beans in my ball book. So we're going to take this knob and turn it. See, it goes in increments of five and there it's set to 20, and we're ready. Now it says to insert jars. Well, I already insert jars just because I'm a Boy Scout and I'm always prepared, right? And we're going to press the button again. And now it says warm. Now it's just warming empty jars because we are going to pack our raw beans into warm jars. The reason why we're doing that is because it says here under raw pack, it says tightly pack beans, into hot jars as directed in step three, see page 387. And actually it's the previous page right here. It's actually the steps on methods for pressure canning vegetables in general. And so it refers back to the, that process, but it tells us how to raw pack. We're going to warm the jars. We're going to tightly pack the beans in those jars. And then we're going to continue um, with steps four and five, which the machine really takes care of. There is an option here to hot pack where you can actually uh, cook the, put the beans in boiling water, but uh, we're not going to do that part. Now, while this is warming up, I do want to bring out a very important point here. The first time you ever open and use your pressure canner, there is a process in the manual that comes with, with the machine on how to run it the first time. And you're supposed to run it through a cycle. And it's very detailed, it tells you all the steps, just follow the steps. I do have a video of me doing it, 
Uh, and in fact, uh, in the top right hand corner of the screen, if you're on a device that does uh, cards, I'll have a link up there. There will also be a link at the end of this video on the white closing screen. But you want to go through and do this first time use of the pressure canner. It's supposed to get rid of any residues that might be left in the pressure canner uh, from the manufacturing process. So I think it's kind of important. Um, once you've, and, and I went through this, in fact, if you watch those videos, you'll see I went through this a few times with the manual and I have since done that, but uh, there is a quick, quick guide that once you get familiar with the process, you can go through the quick guide and it'll, it's, you'll know enough about it that you can go through this. It's not a difficult process. It really isn't. Uh, it, it's it's, it's a little, maybe a little daunting. It was for us the first time, uh, but we kind of jumped into it. Me and Mrs. Bowtie stumbled around the kitchen for a while and finally figured out what we're doing and got the thing to work pr with, with no failures. So we we're very happy. Now, I'm not a cook. Mrs. Bowtie is a very skilled cook. Uh, I'm actually a handyman. And it's one of the reasons I like doing these videos because if I can do it, you can probably figure this out. I am not a cook. I am not the person that you want um, uh, cooking your gourmet meals by any chance. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, uh, if I can do it, anybody literally can do it. I can make ramen noodles and I make a killer grilled cheese. I just remembered that uh, last night or a couple days ago that I can make a great banana bread too. So anyway, um, is that right, Mrs. Bowtie? Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, we are going to uh, get the warm water. Be sure to go through the manual the first time you use this. Um, we're going to get this water boiling so we have water to put on top of the beans. And once this is warmed up, we'll start the next process. One other thing, the cool thing about this, once this does reach warm, it actually keeps the jars warm for you until you're ready for them, which is really convenient. So uh, that's, that's a very nice thing. So uh, just, just another little feature. It'll actually hold itself at certain uh, points in the process so that you can continue processing whatever foods. Fortunately, the green beans, there's not, a, there's really not much to process. We're just going to be stuffing the jars with raw beans and that's it. Uh, that makes it a little easier for add this round. Salt. Yes, we will be adding some salt. We'll get there. We'll be right back when it's warmed up. So it beeped twice for me, which means it is warm. It has warmed the jars. It still says warm. It actually lit up an indicator right here that says fill jars. So it's time to fill the jars. Very exciting. Here we go. So now there's no pressure on this. Or in fact, I don't even think I was supposed to put on the lid now that I think about it. Uh, there is no pressure on this built up or anything. It's just warmed the jars. But remember, always open the lid away from you. You see there wasn't even any steam. Now, let me just uh, point out something. This thing here will be releasing steam at some point during this. And uh, we made the mistake early on of putting this underneath the upper cabinets and it blew steam up our upper cabinets and kind of messed with the finish. It's, it's okay because once it dried out, it went back. But um, be aware of that, uh, that this will do that. And you don't want this little relief valve here pointing right up at your upper cabinets, which is why I've got it out here on this side over here. There's no cabinet above it. It's got, it's free and clear above. So anyway, we're going to take this now. Now, I normally empty this in the sink, but it's way over there, so I'm not gonna do that. And we're going to stuff this with the beans. Try not to drop too many. It does say to tightly pack. Now, there's a thing called headspace. And if you're not familiar with canning, you're gonna learn headspace. Headspace is the space between the top of the liquid that we're gonna put in here and the top of the jar. Headspace is very important because um, the contents here might boil. Uh, they are going to boil. Uh, the contents in here 
uh, may expand a little bit in the process. Uh, but as that liquid is boiling, you don't want it to get close to the edge of this jar. And the reason is because if it does, it could compromise the seal that's going to be made between the rubber inside the top of the lid. In fact, let me pull one out here. There's a, that, or, that yellow color or red color, I mean, is the rubber seal that's going to seal to the jar. So you want to make sure that you observe those headspace. The headspace for this is supposed to be one inch and it says a generous one inch. Now, I still have my ruler. <laughs> so uh, you can see from that line right there down to here, that's an inch. So I'm going to be double checking these, making sure that the liquid is an inch down from the edge of the jar. They do make a very handy little tool for doing this. Uh, I don't have one of those. I don't have a lid lifter either. There's a little stick with a magnet on the end that you can lift the lid, lids out of that hot water uh, and not uh, singe yourself like I just did. So, okay. So let me get the boiling water together here and we'll get start. We'll get moving with this. Not quite ready for that boiling water because we have to put a little salt in here. And the instructions say, if you're doing quartz, you do a full uh, teaspoon. If you're doing pints, you do half a teaspoon. And so with my measure, and personally, I like using Himalayan pink salt. Um, I, do, I don't use iodized salt when I can help it. Uh, and that's for other reasons in other videos, but uh, use your salt, whatever you use. We're going to put half a teaspoon in that jar and then we're going to get the boiling water. So a few other things that we've found useful to have is a large ladle and a wide mouth funnel for putting water into these jars. So I have very carefully packed this as tight as I can. There is a, some salt in there. You can still see it in the bottom, but I've packed it. I've also measured with my little ruler that it's down an inch from the top and we're going to fill this with water. This is boiling water. To within an inch of the top. Okay, now we need to do something special. I'm going to put in this bowl some distilled white vinegar. Just a bit of it, it doesn't have to be a lot. And we're going to wipe down the rim of this jar with that vinegar. Now this can be done with regular water. A lot of people will say just use water. Um, some people we know, uh, Zach and Jenny over at Stiver's Homestead suggested using this and gave us good reasoning for it. So we've always just used vinegar just to clean the top of that rim on that jar. That's all it's for. Then you can take the lid, that's the lid, and we want to put on the ring. Now, it says these rings are not supposed to be tight, okay? And I've seen a lot of helpful advice on how to do this, finger tight. What I find is I'll spin it until it stops on its own, and then I will turn it one eighth of a turn. That's it, that's all you need, one eighth of a turn. Not the quarter turn, you can only turn it about a third of a turn if you just really wrench it down. It's just holding this lid in place. That's all it needs to do. And we're gonna put this back into the camera. And I am packing these very carefully. It says, be careful to tightly pack. 
Make sure it's an inch down. Uh, there's the ruler. I've got plenty of room. I am a little bit obsessive compulsive when it comes to stuff like that. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, I used to use the D word in that as well. And I don't think I should because I don't think I have a disorder. It's just obsessive compulsive that I've developed over the years. And I'm going to try to stop saying that D word when I'm describing myself, simply because I know there's a lot of people out there that are suffering with it as a disorder. And that's a whole different ball game that uh, we have to respect. Okay, so another one full, nice and packed. Actually, that was better than the first one. I got a little worried um, on after that first one. I, we might have more than six pints here. So half a teaspoon of salt right in the top. Wipe down that lid or the rim, I mean. I can stick another bean or two in here right there. Okay. Uh, see, I didn't fill the boiling water yet. It's okay, it's why we have the funnel. Check my depth. Depth is good. I'm gonna wipe that rim down again. If you watched any of my earlier videos, you know occasionally I forget to wipe things down. That's why I said the very important thing to try to make myself remember. Because sometimes I don't remember with my ADD brain. And I do have ADD. I am diagnosed. And a ring. See, I just spun it till it stopped. One eighth of a turn, that's it. So from here, I'm gonna continue on. I'll put you on a faster uh, time lapse here and uh, we'll be back in just a few seconds for you. So off camera, I had to do a quick pivot. I got two more jars because I quickly realized that three pounds of beans were not gonna fit in four or five pint jars. It's gonna be seven and I still have that much left over. Now these videos are as much a, my own journal because I go back and watch these videos quite frequently and remind myself of stuff. So this is a note to myself. Remember, three pounds of beans do not fit in seven jars. I'll know next time. Guarantee. You'd think I'd already know that considering we already did this once. No, I did quart jars. I did quart. I'm using that as my excuse and I'm gonna stand by it. So, jar number seven is Filled with liquid up to the top. Well, not to the top, an inch from the top. And this headspace is very important because it has a lot to do with allowing the uh, seal to actually take. Last lid. And I'll take you in for a look here. I'm gonna put this uh, ring on here. Remember, let it do itself and then, whoops, it didn't do itself. <laughs> See, you heard that shink. Now, eighth of a turn. That's it. Finger tight. Okay, let me bring you in for a closer look. So again, cool thing. It's kept the jars warm for me. It's telling me to fill the jars. And if you look in here, we've got seven wide mouth jars. Now, remember I said eight half pints? Well, if I didn't use the wide mouth jars, I could have put eight of regular mouth jars. Now, again, these jars need to be special canning jars. Do not be using your leftover mayonnaise jars or anything like that. The glass is not tempered. They will shatter. They will destroy everything. Be sure you're using 
actual canning jars. These are ball canning jars. Uh, there's a few different brands that you can use. I'm not going, I'm not sponsored or anything. So use the one that you feel that you need to use and we'll be good. I want to hear about anybody using their old mayonnaise jars as to can with It's It's not a good idea. They will explode. They won't, can't stand under the pressure. So there we go. Seven jars in there. We get our lid and I bring you down here close. You see there's locked. There's install, remove turn it, lower this, and it kind of caught a little bit. It can just adjust a little bit and lock in place. Now, jars are in there, ready to go. Salt, beans, rims wiped. I'm very pleased that I remembered to wipe all the rims, and we're going to push the button and see what it tells us next. And there it says heat. Now this is gonna go through the heating process. It's going to start spewing some steam. This little thing is gonna go is going to stop spewing steam and it's going to tell us when to put on the regulator okay this thing doesn't go on just yet it'll tell us when it does that so we're going to let this go and we'll turn the camera back on once this thing is ready to do it so this is the point at which i was talking about steam coming out here and here coming straight up this is where you do not want this blowing onto your nice kitchen cabinet uppers uh, it can mess them up. So be sure to set this like somewhere where you don't have cabinets over these steam vents. So real quick, you can see there are nine minutes on the timer here. And according to the ball canning book, it says in step four, continue heating to achieve 10 pounds, yada, yada. Okay, I'm sorry. Vent steam for 10 minutes, then close vent. 10 minutes, it's exactly what that's, it started at 10. It's exactly what that's telling me now. So it's gonna sit there and vent uh, steam for a total of 10 minutes, and then we'll put on the regulator. And this will just go on top. There's actually a setting, uh, and, actually, and I'll show you here when we do it. Uh, there's can and vent on there. So regulator's coming right up. For me in about uh, eight minutes for you in about two seconds so i have no doubt that it goes without saying but i have to say it anyway because some people don't quite think things through this is very hot steam coming out of here it's over 200 degrees don't be sticking your fingers in it it will burn it will instantly burn this is steam okay so that's very important you'll notice we have one minute left here and we're about to put this regulator on top of that steaming vent right there. And so what you'll want to do is you're going to want to get a oven mitt. Now this is an oven mitt with one of those uh, silicone sides. I like this one in particular because the water cannot permeate it. If you have a decent oven mitt or, or hot pad, it'll work just fine. But we're going to sit here and we're going to look at this until it beeps. And it says right there, put regulator on. Now, I'm going to show you what setting it's on. So you can see underneath there, it says can. You want that thing pointed directly at can. Now, this thing is about to pop up. You'll notice this thing is not, you could turn this, don't do it, please don't do it. You could turn this and you could get the lid off at this point, but it is extremely dangerous. What you're gonna find that as soon as the pressure builds up in here, that little lock is going to pop up and you can't open it anymore. So of course, once the regulator is on, we simply hit the button and it starts the 20 minute timer for canning. And of course, that little lock up there is going to lock in just a couple few minutes. After the canning time is up, it will go into a cool cycle where it will stop the boiling process and begin to cool. And if you look in the instructions, you will see that uh, turn off heat, that pressure return to zero naturally, wait two minutes longer, then open vent. 
Remove canner lid. Wait 10 minutes, then remove jars. Cool and store. So we're coming down to the end of the cooling process. About uh, four minutes ago, the pressure relief, the, pre the uh, relief valve released and let the rest of the pressure out. And we're down to the last minute of waiting. And uh, nice thing about this is you basically, you go in and you do something occasionally, push the button, go on, do something else. And that's kind of where I am today. I had some other work I had to get done and I went on with my stuff while y'all were waiting for me to come back, which was like, what, a split second? And so uh, we come down to the end and we're going to unload the uh, pressure canner. Now, there is a couple things about unloading the pressure canner. Um, one of the things that's gonna happen is we're going to lift out those jars and there it goes. We're going to lift out those jars and not tilt them at all. Now, some of you know that I used to tilt them slightly to get the water off the top, and I have since found out that that's not a good idea because if the water gets on that seal, it can compromise the seal. Now, it never happened to me before, but I like to keep those things straight. The other thing is we're going to put it on this uh, cooling rack over here, and it needs to stay there no less than 12 hours and no more than 24 hours. Um, well, no less than 12 hours. We're going to let it sit there almost 24 hours before we put them up. We actually store our canned goods underneath here uh, where this table is. But uh, you really need to let them sit, not all clumped together. There has to be some air between them. And so we can now safely open the top. And again, when you're opening a hot top, always open it away from you. Because that burst of steam, if you got your face in there, it'll hurt you. So, we get our can lifter. And listen for the telltale signs that the seal actually took. You're going to hear a pop of that lid. And that's the good sound that we're looking for right here. I can get my bottle lifter out in, down in here. Ah. So listen for those pops, because we're going to hear them here within a minute, as soon as these start coming out. Having a hard time grabbing them, they're kind of close together. They're still bubbling a little bit. I don't know if you can see that one I just took out, it's still got bubbling going on in it. You see the bubbling going on in there still? Yeah, sometimes the liquid siphons out of them, but all the liquid is still at the same level it was when we put it in. So I feel very good about that. Um, we may have not had enough headspace on the ones that siphoned, I don't know. So anyway. Did you leave a little extra this time? Well, yeah, I actually used the ruler. We left a full inch. Okay. So as, as per the instructions. So anyway, um, yeah, I've had a long day. It's it's uh, 9.35 at night. I will be walking you through the cleaning of this thing tomorrow morning for me, uh, for you, in just a second. Okay, so first things first. We pulled these jars out um, 16 hours ago. And remember we said between 12 and 24 hours, we should just leave them sit. And you can see they're still sitting in the exact same place. First thing you need to do is to check the seal. Now, this was the first time 
that I didn't hear the plink of the seal. And I'm not sure why that happened, uh, but I didn't hear the plink. However, when you look at the lids, you'll notice that it's slightly concave. It's lower in the middle. And in fact, what I should do here, I should show you what a lid looks like that's not sealed. So this is a lid that's not sealed. And you'll notice when I push down in the middle, it clicks. You hear that? This is a lid that's not sealed. Once it is sealed, that middle gets sucked in so it doesn't click anymore. And all these jars are perfectly sealed. Now at this point, two things you can do with it. First thing that we do is we always take off the rings and store it. Without the ring, we live in Florida, it's very humid around here. And moisture can get underneath those, can make it rust, and that can cause a problem with the seal if it rusts too much. So welcome to Florida. Uh, the other thing is, if I just grab... That did not seal at all. That's not supposed to have happened. That's what's supposed to happen. When I hold the lid, this jar is sealed. I've never had that happen before. Nice to see it on camera, right? Of course, you turn on the camera, weird things are gonna happen. So, obviously, this jar, not sealed. All it means is we have beans coming up here soon. I'll put it in the fridge until we use it. I'm holding my hand under there. That's a good seal. When it's a good seal, they will stay attached. This is how it's supposed to be, okay? You should be able to lift that jar with that lid. I'm a little disconcerted. There's two. Now, this will st store in the fridge still, which is okay. I'm gonna have to try this again though. Uh, I'll be honest. Full disclosure, never happened to me before. So there's two jars that did not seal. That's very weird. Now the weird thing is that lid didn't click either. Okay, now it's clicking. It's not clicking. Hmm. That's interesting. So we got five jars that sealed, two that did not. Those two will go in the fridge. Uh, that will keep a little while until we use them for a meal. So that's not a problem. We, we eat beans, it's okay. So anyway, testing the seals. Uh, full disclosure, I've never had that happen before. And uh, of course, on a full uh, description, video it has to happen so hey life is imperfect sometimes so there you go now uh, as promised i am going to go through the cleaning of this thing and we're going to go through the parts on this and just just a brief instruction on how to go through this and make sure it's good and clean so let me move this into the kitchen before we go to the cleaning just real quick Labeled the top, I was just conferring with Mrs. Bowtie and I have a feeling that we may have gotten mixed in with some old lids uh, and that had not been marked properly from early on in our canning. So yeah, be sure to mark your lids because once they're marked, they're marked and you can kind of tell that they're marked and they get shuffled away into a different place in our house. So uh, we'll use them for other stuff, but not for canning anymore. So anyway, last thing, now on to the cleaning. Okay, so I want to go through just a few of the parts, actually all the parts that you're going to clean on occasion. Uh, if your canning processes go well and cans don't leak or break or spew or whatever, uh, you shouldn't have a lot of cleaning to do. But uh, there are a few things that I want to show um, that are, they're all covered in the manual, but I want to be sure to show them um, here in this video 
for anyone who's new who might, might be questioning about how this thing works and so forth. First thing uh, I will mention is I like to put a little screen in the drain. I'm about to wash these things in because I don't want a small part or two to wash down the drain. Now, I'm also going to take apart a few more things that you're not going to need to pull off. You may never need to pull apart, but I just want to make it clear um, what uh, parts are in here. So anyway, so first off, the little green thing here. This is a sensor. This right here is a temperature sensor. And this is actually what decides, um, makes decisions through the process of canning. And so we want to be very careful with that. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to just take a damp cloth. In fact, I'm going to take a damp cloth here um, and gently wipe that if we ever need to. Uh, we're going to see that there's parts of this. This is actually attached to the canner itself. You never want to immerse this in water. That's the most important thing. You immerse this in water, it's dead. Okay? Uh, and, and we'll talk about what's inside here, and I'll show you the inside of, of the canner itself. Uh, the canner itself is electronics. It is not waterproof, okay? It's not water resist, not even water resistant. So don't be immersing the electronics part in water. So we take off the lid. Now this lid is a single unit. Now I have only ever just wiped the outside. I've never really had any messes with uh, with this canner. Uh, we've done quite a few batches of canning with it now. Um, it's not, I've never had the outside get dirty. The important thing is the inside. Now you can immerse this. This lid is completely water, uh, not permeable, not permeable, not, uh, you can't damage it with water. Um, but first of all, the regulator. The regulator, uh, again, had someone uh, comment on one of my videos. We had a conversation. She was having a very difficult time getting this off the first time. Once you get this off uh, one or two or three times, it's a lot easier. You can see it just pops on with very little pressure. Uh, so it's, I, th I think it just has to do with the spring in here it needs to get worked in a little bit. Uh, this, is, this can be washed if you need to. Um, that can go in, the, in soapy water. Um, Underneath here, now this, here's the important part. You see this framework right here. This actually holds the seal. Now that seal is very important. And you can actually get a replacement seal if you ever need to. But this just very gently pulls off. And, and this seal here, um, is, it's a silicone seal. You want to be very careful with this. Now, full disclosure, uh, I'm ordering another one just to have one on hand in case I ever need it, but I'm also a little bit obsessive compulsive about making sure this is clean. This thing here, this framework that it goes on, um, there is a silicone piece in the middle here. Uh, you don't need to pull that off or anything. It, this whole thing can go in the sink, and I do pull it off the framework because there is a groove in here that this fits in, and stuff have, I have had stuff get stuck in there. So this can go in soapy water. This can go in soapy water too, but I wanna to, want to point out this. This is where the regulator is. This is the inside. There's this little cap here, and you'll, well, maybe not when it's new. This thing actually moves. Now, what the way this holds on here, there's three clips. And if you look in the manual, Early on in the manual, it says how to remove this thing if you ever need to. It is possible, again, if, if a jar has leaked, uh, it is possible that food gets pushed up in there. What you do, and I've just taken a, a butter knife, nothing with a sharp edge, just a, just very easy, and there's little slots on the sides here. Can you, can you see there's little slots right there? So what I do, and this is according to the manual, is I just go in there and pop it out. Beware, it flies across the room. And you can see there's three little clips on there. Um, and you can see in there, uh, there is a hole that goes through there. Can I can I get it lined up with, with the camera? Um, anyway, there is a hole through there. Uh, if you have a small brush of some kind and you ever need to, you can actually clean that out. And that will go in there, clean that out. Um, pipe cleaner, something like that. Uh, if you ever need to. I have never needed to clean that out yet. So 
Um, that's where I'm at. This little cap here just pops back on there. Okay? Uh, the pressure relief valve, this thing here, um, it actually does have a silicone uh, ring around the base and it does come out if you need to clean it. Okay? Uh, again, I've never had to clean this thing other than just dipping it in soapy water. Uh, this little um, silicone washer, see if I can hold it up there where you can see it. Uh, this little silicone washer simply slides on there and make sure that you, well, you can see there's a groove around the uh, edge of this. It goes on that groove, so you have to kind of push it down on there and you can see it's there. You can tell it's working, but if you just push it like that and it won't go through anymore. So that is the other part that needs clean. Uh, there is, you do not remove this. You do not remove this. These things are part of the pressure canner lid. So, uh, but this can go in the dishwater if you need it to, if you feel so compelled to wash it. Uh, and I have actually put the whole thing in the dishwater. I, I didn't need, I've never needed to dismantle those parts, but they can be dismantled. The inner liner. All of this, this is just a big pot. That's all this is. And so this can go in uh, your soap, soapy water to get rinsed off. Um, it, it's a pressure canner. I'll bet it's dishwasher safe, but I never have done that. So I just wash it by hand. This, what is left here now, everything that's attached here is all the electronics. This thing here is all that's left, okay? Do not put any of this in water. Do not put water in this thing. This right here is a, is a sensor button. There's electronics down in there that do the heating. There's elements, there's a little computer that controls the, uh, the whole process in here. You do not put this in water ever, and you don't put water in this ever. So, and that's it. That is all the parts. It is very, I'll admit, it's very cleverly designed and uh, almost foolproof if you just respect this piece right here because this is the part that you can mess up. Yeah, so let me just wash through these real quick. So that's it, beginning to end. Uh, this is gonna be sit left to dry, and then I'm, I actually keep the box. The reason why I keep the box is because I'm, I'm just very meticulous about putting things back in the box and the packing and closing it up so it's nice and sealed and ready for the next use. I did, whoa, and I just <laughs> prefer to do it that way. Uh, the tripod slipped a little bit there, sorry. Hope, hope no one fell over. Um, anyway. So yeah, it's all the parts and how it's dismantled. I, I hope this made it a little less daunting for you. Uh, this was a very simple can, uh, this cycle, uh, just raw beans and warm jars, that was it. And then boiling water with salt on top. And uh, yeah, nothing fancy. Um, we do more content for this machine. And so uh, if you would like to see more or and be, be notified when we have stuff coming out, be sure and subscribe to the channel. And uh, we talk mostly about life in the garden and sometimes other things on rare occasion. But uh, this, is, uh, this is for canning stuff that we get out of the garden. And uh, so we're very excited about this. It really simplified things for us. Um, we don't really have a facility to have a full canner here. Uh, it's a small kitchen, as you can probably tell. And uh, this is just stores in a little storage area that we leave it. And uh, it does well for us. Um, so yeah, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, of course. Uh, if you're already subscribed, thank you so much. We're trying to grow the uh, community, and not only the community for Bowtie Life, but for all homesteading and uh, gardening in general. Uh, we, we're, we're building a, a tremendous compendium of information out in uh, on the YouTube-verse uh, that hopefully will be around for a very long time to come and uh, people will be able to reference back to these and, and, and learn about them. Uh, if they ever come up with a new one of these, we may have to get a new one and do new videos. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, 
If you thought this was uh, informational, educational, inspirational, or just entertaining to see me fumble around and uh, almost lose a jar back there because it didn't seal, uh, I think we, I, I still think we had an old, old uh, used lid mixed in with our pile. And uh, I'm going to have to be more careful about that in the future. But uh, um, anyway, if you thought, like I said, if you thought it was informational, educational, inspirational, or entertaining, please click the thumbs up on this video and share it on your social media with friends that you may know that might be interested in canning with the Presto Precise Digital Pressure Canner. Uh, so that is the end of it. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for more. I happen to know we're already getting cucumbers. We're going to be making some more pickles, I think, uh, pretty soon. And what else is coming? Oh, we've got blueberries and strawberries and loquats and dates. Those are the stuff that are in our freezer right now. Oh, and we've got, maybe we'll do something with hot peppers. I don't know. Uh, we do hot pepper sauces and a few other things. You can look through the channel. We've got uh, over 350 videos as of this recording on October uh, 8th of 2023. And we uh, release a new video, not quite every day, but frequently. So uh, stay tuned and uh, appreciate you all stopping by and watching and sharing and clicking the thumbs up and subscribing. These are all free things. It's just a click or a tap on your device that uh, helps grow the community. And uh, appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with us. Y'all have a blessed day.